I'm going to next do a CMake example using my uh, virtual machine that I installed on my Mac computer. So when I installed this virtual machine, it had absolutely nothing on it. Uh, and then I went to the MSDN store and I downloaded Visual Studio. And I also downloaded and installed CMake from the Windows 32 installer. So you can see that I've got CMake here on my desktop. If I ever need to run it, I can just double click it and CMake will pop up. So the trickier part is where do I find Visual Studio? This is my first time using Windows 8 and so it actually took me a couple minutes to figure out where it was because when I press where my start bar used to be, there's really nothing here. And I look down for my more apps and then somewhere in here I should be able to find Windows Visual Studio 2012. So here is a bunch of different things, uh, Visual Studio Blend, Microsoft Visual Studio Tools, etc. I'm going to take this one and I'm going to right click and say that I want to pin it to my start menu. So now I'll find Visual Studio 2013 whenever I come back to my start menu. So I'm going to go ahead and tap this and Visual Studio 2013 will start up which who knows may take five or ten minutes. Actually, it wasn't so bad. So this is typically how you would start a new project if you just wanted to develop a project from scratch. In this class, we're actually going to focus on determining the files in your project and other pieces of your project before we actually create the project. So I don't want to start with a project in Visual Studio that then is difficult to grade. So I'm going to go ahead and close Visual Studio and now I'm going to use my machine as it actually is in order to do something. So now let's go ahead and find a directory where I want to create my project. So I'm going to keep it in documents. It doesn't really matter where you do this. And I'm going to create a new directory here. New folder. ECE275. And then in ECE275 I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call hello CMake. And inside of hello CMake, now I'm going to create my CMake project. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new text document, CMake lists.txt. So this is a magical document that CMake requires in order to build all of its pieces of its project. So I'm going to create CMake lists, and inside of this list file, I need to type a couple of commands. For the first assignment, I'll give these commands to you, and I'll go ahead and give you a template. But for now, we're going to create a project called Hello CMake. And I want to actually keep my source in a different directory. I'm going to create a folder called SRC for source. And inside of that source directory is where I'm going to keep all the source files for my C project. So I need to tell CMake, look in a subdirectory for more files. And that subdirectory's name is src for source. So I'll save this file and close it. And now inside the source directory, I need to also create a CMake lists.txt file. And in addition to that, I need to create the source file where I'm going to keep all of my things. I'm going to call this main.c. So in this CMake lists, I'm telling the project that I want to create a new executable. Because I'm going to run this file. And I'm going to call the executable hello CMake. And the executable is made up of one file called main.c. So I'm going to save that. So this is told the CMake compiler compiler that I'm going to create a project. I want to call that project Hello CMake. And inside that project, I'm going to have one executable. I can find more information in the source directory in that one executable I want to call Hello CMake. And I'm going to use a file called main.c to produce Hello CMake. OK, so now that I've built the infrastructure for my CMake, I'm going to go ahead and find where the source is and use CMake to actually build my project. So somewhere down in here, 
documents. ECE 275, hello CMake is the location of my CMake lists. And I'm going to make my build directory hello CMake slash build. That is, I'm going to put the pieces of my project in a different directory. OK, so typically now, once we've determined where the source code is, this tells CMake where to find the root CMake lists. The build the binaries, this tells CMake where I want to actually build the compiled version of my files and where to put my project files. Now I'm going to press configure. And it says, oh, you don't have a build directory yet. Do you want to create that? Sure, no problem. And now it asks me, what compiler would you like to use? Or more appropriately, what version of Visual Studio would you like to generate the project for? So here you can actually choose from Visual Studio back to the late 90s, all the way through Visual Studio from probably last week, and then lots of other versions of Visual Studio that are sort of distributed. If you happen to have any of these kinds of projects that you'd like to build for, you can also select those. Uh, though, as it turns out, you actually have to have those things installed. You can't just generate these files without installing the program first. So we're going to do Visual Studio 12 2013. I'm going to select use the default compilers that belong with this um, IDE, Integrated Development Environment. And then I'm going to press Finish. So now it's going to use Visual Studio to try to generate a project for this CMake lists. And it says there's something wrong, error in configuration process. Project files may be invalid. So let's look at what it says. CMake error, the source directory, C users, Jonathan Sprinkle, documents, ECE 275, hello CMake, does not appear to contain CMake lists. Well, that's interesting because I was just there. I have something called, oops, let's go back. I have something called C, users, Jonathan Sprinkle, documents, ECE 275, hello CMake, CMake lists.txt. So if you go back and look at this again, this is exactly the directory that I specified. So the reason that I did this was because sometime yesterday when I was doing a dry run of this demo, I probably spent about 10 minutes trying to figure out what was wrong. And I think some of you might have actually experienced this as well. So it turns out that Windows thinks it's very smart. It thinks that if it has a file that is of kind text document, that you don't actually have to put the .txt at the end of your file name. So that is, it's hiding the extensions for the files that it already knows about. So in order to change this, I'm going to go to the view. There's a little checkbox here that says file name extensions to show or hide extensions that identify a kind of file if it's already there. I'm going to click this so that it will show me the file extensions. And now we can see that cmakelists.txt.txt was the actual name of the file. So I'm going to rename this file to remove the .txt. So now I have a file just called cmakelists.txt. So you can probably imagine that if I go back and immediately run CMake, I'm not going to get the same error because now it does contain a file called cmakelists.txt. So let's configure one more time. And now we're actually going to get a little bit further, but those of you who are thinking ahead have already realized that something else is also wrong. So it was able to find the CMake lists file. The problem is that there's a bunch of other files that are also missing. So I told it to look in a directory called source, and it says source doesn't contain the CMake lists file. Oh, that's right, because I still had file extensions automatically hidden then. So let's go into the source directory. We can see here, if I rename this file, I want to remove this.txt, and it would have gotten even more problems if I hadn't come in here because main.c also thinks that it's a text file. So let's rename this one. Voila. Yes, I'm sure I want to change it because I know what I'm doing. You'll find yourself saying this many times too. Yes, I know what I'm doing. Leave me alone. So now I have main.c, cmakelists.txt. 
I'm going to come over here and try to reconfigure one more time. And now I only have one error. It tells me that uh, no, I don't have a command that tells the minimum version of CMake for which this file is valid. This warning I'm going to uh, not pay attention to for now, although we will want to pay attention to it later. Uh, if you submit a project that has this problem, then uh, you're probably going to get dinged for that. So now I'm going to generate. And when I press generate, it's going to provide in a build directory, it's going to provide the version of this project that I can open with Visual Studio. So let's go up. And this is the build directory that was created. And I have a bunch of files that are now created here. So hello cmake.solution is the one that I'm going to open. So you'll recall this was the name of the project that I specified. And now after I open it up, it's going to try to build it. And probably it's going to figure out that I just created an empty file. And so there may be a problem compiling. So now here in main.c is a bare knuckles empty file. Int main, I'm not going to provide any parameters here. Printf, hello, cmake. Don't forget to add the new line and then return zero. So now I'm going to try to build this project. And while the build executes, uh, it's going to check a bunch of different pieces. It regenerates the CMake files, actually, if you need to. And you can see that it actually succeeded. So if I try to run a debugger here, it'll allow me to run this program. Yes, I'd like to build it. Uh, the problem is that the default project is all build. And there's no executable for all build. So I'm going to come to Hello CMake, and I'm going to make this project my startup project. So now let's try running one more time. And oh, something popped up and then immediately went away. So if I want to see what that actually was, and I want to run, I can start without debugging here. Control plus F5. And now it will show me that my output is hello CMake. And then after I press a key, my output will go away.